Hello, Internet. Tammy here, Lilac City Soapery. Here I am back with another cold process soap. This time we're going to call it Blue Bliss. Uh, I have already started with the oils. All the oils in the lye is in the bucket, just like I always do. And we're going to bring those to tray. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you don't have to be bored with it watching this uh, come to trace. And the best way to tell if your soap has come to trace is if there's no more oil slicks on top. You don't see a separation of the oils so that you can tell that you're at trace or you're at least got it mixed up really well. So that's what is happening here. It really turns a beautiful light color depending on the oils that you're using. This time I am using a beautiful blend of canola oil and olive oil. The canola is super light and um, can be replaced in your recipe up to 40%. And then the rest I use the olive oil. Uh, so now we're going to add a little color. The colors are a beautiful yellow and blue. I think that's firefly yellow. And I think the blue is, oh man, I don't even, I have so many colors of blue, I'm not even sure, but I can, I'll post it down in the comments below what the colors are that I used. And it's a beautiful sunshine yellow, just glorious. And the blue is a deep royal blue. It's just, oh, it's just so pretty. And the two together are just glorious. So, this one's going to be a little bit different. I did some layering in this soap um, and did a Michaeline and just kind of played with this, just did what I felt. I don't, I don't have a plan. I never do. I think, okay, those colors are pretty and I like this scent and speaking of scent, um, here we're putting the scent in and I can't remember the name of the scent now either, but I'll, like I said, I'll put it down below. Um, but I like the scents, I like the colors, and then the soap just kind of comes together um, for better or for worse. So I usually don't have a plan. Uh, on occasion I will. I will plan something out and it works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't turn out too hot, but, but that's okay. And that's what we like about soaping is it's kind of, it's a little bit of an adventure every time you put your, your oils together. So, so that's good. My husband recently uh, is into this pretty good, and he really enjoys the artistic side that has come out of him um, since he started doing soap. And you wouldn't believe the colors and the combinations and the, the designs that he wants to come up with. I mean, it's just incredible. He is a very camouflage is my favorite color type of person, you know, the darker browns and the blacks and and then he said, gosh, gosh, babe, let's do something bright. And I just didn't even know who he was. So <laughs> anyway, so now we're going to pour this and I'm putting a base layer of yellow. A pretty thick one, probably about an inch, inch and a half down in there. Tap it down pretty good so no air bubbles. And then I'm going to put a pewter gray or pewter silver mica line. Now, with a mica line, or a pencil line, some people like to call it, you have to do it pretty thick so that the other colors that you're going to put on top don't poke through it, uh, unless, of course, that's the look you're going for. Um, this one I happen to go really smooth first and then put the mica line on top. I've also done where I leave the bottom pretty thick, um, or I leave it alone until it's pretty thick, and then I spoon with it a little bit and make some peaks and valleys and, and then Michael line and it, sh it, it gives it a different look entirely. But, uh, and it's messy. <laughs> but a, um, a Michael line sure gives it some, some depth and some, some different uh, design elements that you could work with. And it, any color. Uh, I happen to use the pewter because um, I thought it was fairly neutral compared to the yellow and the, and the blue but you can use any color that you want. So um, if you don't want the mica line all over the rest of your colors, you need to wipe the inside of your container of your mold so it doesn't creep up the, the sides of your, uh, on the sides of your colors. So here I'm putting the blue on the back of the spoon so that it hopefully doesn't break through 
my mica line, and I'm sorry you get bucket in your face for a minute until I can get it all in there. I guess there's just, I'm trying to find a better way, a better camera angle for you guys to see some of what we're doing, but I guess you get the gist of it. And then with the spoon, I'm going to make sure it goes into the, the corners and kind of tamp it all down without disturbing the mica line below it. So, and I will probably bang it down so that it's nice and even as well. And that will pop up some of those bubbles that you inevitably create. So, that's what I'm doing there. I try and keep the sides as clean as possible. It's not always, <laughs> it doesn't always happen, but we, we do our best. And then we'll uh, do the yellow on top of that. So like I said, kind of in a layering situation. Um, it's, that's really easy to do. You can pour it in or spoon it in or however you want to get it in there without messing up your lines. So. I think the the main idea of talking this time was to kind of throw some different stuff at you guys. Um, I usually just record, and then I take my voice out, and then I dub over. And there are so many other soapers that just talk as they go. And uh, <laughs> I guess I could do that. But most of the time, my, my husband's in the room, and my mom's in the room, and we're futzing with the dogs, and, you know, we've got... Life is occurring while I'm trying to pour some soap, and so talking through it is um, is doesn't seem to be too much of an option for me unless I'm home alone uh, and can do that, and that rarely happens anymore. So, so I'll just continue to dub it, I guess, and that way, if I mess up, I can just uh, I can just redo it. <laughs> so, um, at the close to the end of this, when I'm all done with the layering. I want to talk to you a little bit about the design aspect of this. Um, designing something on the top is the epitome of your artistic ability. I think you can um, you can use any variety of things, uh, tools, or embeds, or um, sprinkles, or candy spheres, or oh the the there's a, an, an incredible amount of things that you can use to decorate the tops of your soap. It's funny, I watch, um, <laughs> I watch uh, royalty soaps. I, I like to watch her do her soaps, and she's just, she's just incredible. And, uh, you know, I know she's been doing it for a lot of years, so she's really perfected her craft, and I, I'm a big fan of uh, the royalty soaps of Katie. And um, it's so funny, though. I always laugh. She makes such beautiful swirls and spirals or whatever she does on the tops of our soaps and then she covers it up with piping. <laughs> I always think, dang girl, why aren't you covering up your pretty your pretty tops with piping? The piping's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but why go through the effort? And I watched one not too long ago and she says, Yeah, I know, I'm putting the piping right on top and all making all these pretty swirls and it just doesn't matter. I thought it was pretty funny. But I tend not to make a pretty swirl if I'm going to top it with something else. That doesn't make too much sense to me. Um, if I'm going to go through the effort of making a pretty swirl, I want someone to see it and appreciate it. Um, so I, if there's no, if I'm not swirling on top, then I guess I'm probably piping or putting putting so, something else on top to to decorate it, and not cover up all my all my art, as it were. So. It looks like I'm doing the final layer of the yellow here, and um, I only did one mica line, and I think the next time I do that, do, do this, I'm going to do multiple mica lines. I've seen people do a, line, a mica line in between each layer, and it's beautiful, and I keep thinking, oh yes, I'm going to do that, and then I only do one, and I, I don't know if I forget or if I... If during the moment I think, oh gosh, that's too much of a pain, or it's more than likely I just forget. But we'll have to try and remember to do that the next time, so that give it some more um, some more dimension. I think that would be pretty cool. So 
now let's design it. So me saying design it is, well, that's rather tongue in cheek. But what I'm going to do is put little blobs of blue on top of my yellow canvas here and then take a skewer probably and um, and swirl it all around and make make some pretty swirls. And I'll show you a close up at the end of, of the swirls. I'm particularly proud of my little swirls. I think they're really pretty and I try not to overdo them. Um, make a big muddy mess of things. That doesn't always happen, but I do my best. Um, but this one turned out really pretty. And you'll see how I did it here in just a few minutes. I did tend just I did just use the two colors um, because they were such they're very complementary. So I I thought I would complement them and then put put something pretty on top of it. There we come with the swirls. That's just a skewer stick for like um, shish kebabs <laughs> that I don't use. Um, and I'm going in and just swirling and trying to pull some of the yellow into the blue and take the blue down into the yellow and vice versa. And you make a, something attractive to look at on top. It looks feathery to me. I think it's pretty. So that's what I did. I think um, swirling is that's that's one of the one of the things I really enjoy. I guess because you could just make it your own. This is a little bit of the silver pewter, actually the mica line. I'm just dusting just a tiny bit on top of it, just right in the middle, um, just to give it a little continuity, I guess. Um, and then, of course, the ever present always appreciated glitter that just catches the light just right and then finally a spray of alcohol for everything to sit and hopefully prevent some ash and that is the top of it so let's get a close-up of those swirls right there little feathery swirls and a different view and now we're going to go right into the cut so um I, I think it's pretty, but I was a little disappointed about the mica line. You can see it there on the bottom, on the left-hand side, between the yellow and the first blue. But I'm thinking maybe darker, thicker, not that color. Maybe I should have used red or something. Green, maybe. But anyway, that's the finished product right there. And I think it turned out okay. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.